Hello, and welcome to the reading guide that covers sections 7.1 and 7.2 of the OpenStax textbook, which are particularly focused on the idea of work. We will also introduce the idea of kinetic energy in this particular video as a concept that helps us connect work to motion. We'll explore the details of kinetic energy when we move on to our unit on conservation laws. So let's go on and begin our overview, which begins on page 238. You can, for the most part, skip this introduction for now. And this is more focused on energy, and thus we'll talk about it in greater detail when we get to our unit on conservation laws. What I want you to focus on is the definition of work, because work is the product of force multiplied through the distance over which a force acts. So you're talking a force being applied for some distance. But it's not the total force. It's only the force that is parallel to the direction of displacement. Thus you will see work written mathematically this way. Now this is one of those really great examples of the colloquial definition of a word work being very different from the scientific definition. Not everything that we would say is work would qualify as work to the physics definition. So here is a nice little summary. And here you've got a lot of nice examples of work. So in this case, you can see very nicely that this gentleman is doing a fort, is applying a force over some distance, and we want the component of the force parallel to the distance, which is F cosine of this theta, giving us work is F D cosine theta, just as was discussed in the previous section. Here, for these two examples, on the other hand, no work is done, because in this case, the person's not moving, so distance is zero, and in this case, the angle between the force and the displacement is 90 degrees, and cosine of 90 is zero, so no work is done. Make sure you understand these examples. Which are discussed in some detail in this text at the bottom of the page. As well as in the text that begins page 240. Pay some careful attention to that particular page as this is a subject that many students tend to screw up their first time through. So I want you to be able to do those kinds of manipulations. I also want you to be able to calculate work. Here you have the units of work as newtons times meters, a force applied over a distance. And in this case, unlike the case for torque, we will give it a special name, the joule, J. We'll talk about why we use joules for work and newtons meters for torque in class. So I would like you to be able to do basic work calculations. So here's a nice example of that, example 7.1, for you to look at. Example 7.2 connects work to the idea of kinetic energy. Now, what do I want you to get? I want you to know the definition of kinetic energy and be able to do some simple calculations. Also, I want you to be able to, if I give you the work, tell me how the kinetic energy will change. This you can mostly skip because we'll come back to the connection between work and energy when we discuss energy in our unit on conservation laws. So you can mostly skip that. Similarly, you can skip the continuation of it at the beginning of page 241. Here you have a discussion on work graphically when you look at a force cosine theta distance plot. Since work is force cosine theta times distance, work will be the area. This is what I want you to get out of this. That work is going to be the area under a force versus distance plot. This aspect of dividing an area up into little rectangles is a calculus idea that I feel you can skip. On page 242, you have an interesting derivation. 
going here. Now, I would suggest you read this, but it's not critical that you really understand all the nitty-gritty details of it. The main part, point I want you to take out of it is the result, which is known as the work energy theorem. This quantity, one-half mv squared, is our kinetic energy. The result is that the work energy theorem connects the network to the change in this kinetic energy. Now they use Ke, I will just use K for kinetic energy. Because to me Ke looks like K times E. And I don't like that. So I'm just going to use K for kinetic energy. So we'll use K is one half mv squared. I want you to know that this is kinetic energy. We'll talk about what energy is in our unit on conservation laws. At the moment, you can just think of this as a way of connecting the work done on an object to the change in speed of the object. Here's a nice example on how to calculate kinetic energy on the top of page 243. And an example using the work energy theorem, which is something I'll expect you to use in your homework. So I would recommend you look at this example 7.3 to give you somewhere to refer to when you're trying to do those problems. Here's another nice example, 7.4 on page 244, using the work energy theorem. 7.5 is also a nice example. I will be asking you to do pretty much all of these manipulations in your homework, but you got lots of nice references here in this textbook on how to use this formula in different ways. This is where I expect you to stop. I expect you to read above here. We'll begin with section 7.3 in, again, in our unit on conservation laws. This concludes this video.